We all think that by reducing emissions, we're going to solve climate change. Not going to do it, I promise. And the other thing, as I said to you earlier, it might just be too late to fix it. But we have a plan. We have a plan to deal with climate change, right? We all heard about the Paris Accord, this wonderful COP21 agreement where 200 nations came together and they all signed this plan. It was really great. There's only, well, there's really two problems. The first one is it's voluntary, as we know. And already, if you look at the top 15 emitters of carbon in the world, 12 of them have violated it. So that voluntary agreement isn't that great. But there's a much bigger problem with it. And the bigger problem is that it won't work. And that's not me talking about it. If you look at uh, what the scientists are now telling us, NOAA is the number one climate research organization on the planet as far as the amount of data that they, they have created and they look at. And what they say is, if we were to stop all emissions today, not reduce them, not slow them down, go to zero emissions today, the climate will continue to get worse for a thousand years. And that's because of the climate lag, because of what we've already put in the air, takes a long time to degrade and get up there and do its damage. So, so anybody who thinks that we're gonna solve climate change by reducing emissions is dreaming. It's not gonna happen, it's, in, it's impossible. Uh, the only solution to climate change is, sure we have to reduce emissions, sure we have to get to carbon neutrality in how we live our lives, but we have got to draw that legacy carbon down or we have to wait a thousand years. Industrial agriculture, we now know, is the reason we have climate change. If you look at industrial ag consequences, here's what's happened over the last, really the, the last couple of hundred years. Uh, when you kill the soil, and I'll talk about that in a second, when you kill the soil, uh, it erodes. There's nothing, there's no lattice work, there's nothing holding it in place, and we all know about the problems of soil runoff. It also kills the microorganisms that are in that soil, uh, but we need those microorganisms. It em emits massive greenhouse gases. You know, that's just, when I talk about the fact that the pollution that comes from the energy industry is causing climate change, the truth of the matter is, when we talk about reducing emissions, 38 to 53 percent, depending on how you measure it, 38 to 53 percent of all the greenhouse gases come from industrial agriculture. And when the UN does an agreement and they get 200 nations to say we're going to reduce emissions, they didn't include agriculture in that. How do you solve a problem that way? It's impossible. Uh, and it also slows down the cycle, it's actually uh, the cycles that keep the earth healthy and, and the engine itself that keeps things in balance. Five foods alone, just five types of food that we grow, emit as much greenhouse gases as any nation on earth other than China and the US. So we have got to include agriculture in our climate strategy or it's not a strategy. And if you, if you dig up an industrial uh, farm and you analyze it, typically there's a 95% reduction of, of the microorganisms in the soil. So the plants are going, well if there's nobody to give this carbon to, I'm gonna leave it up there. I'm not going to bring it down because there's nobody to give it to. And that's why we have climate change. Because the plants have shut down photosynthesis levels and they're just leaving it all up there. And there are four main carbon sinks and these are the sizes of them when they are healthy. They're not healthy today. What we've done, if you notice, the soil sink is bigger than every living thing on earth, the terrestrial one, the plants, the animals, the forests, and the atmosphere. It's bigger than both of those put together. And we've taken 280 billion tons of soil out of, uh, uh, carbon out of our soil and we've put it up in the atmosphere. There's no place for it to come back down to except the soil. It can't go to the oceans. They're already over carbonized and they're, they're acid uh, getting acidic right now. Uh, we know we can't do that. We know we can't put more in the atmosphere. We already have this thing called climate change. The good news is soil will draw it back down. What if we looked at renewable energy as a model? And we said, let's try and replicate the identical thing. And so ladies and gentlemen, I give you renewable food. 
So here's the big question that I have for the world today. Can renewable food, along with renewable energy, the two of them working together, can they reverse climate change and create a new renewable <coughs> industrial age? Absolutely. This is a picture from our test farms in Costa Rica. And we were testing regenerative agriculture, which is what regenerates the soil, and then you maintain it by working with uh, nature as opposed to against nature. And we, we did a bunch of side-by-side -side, uh, test fields. What you're seeing is industrial yucca. We planted industrial yucca, and then right behind it, uh, the same seed, same, same yucca plant, uh, but we, we grew it regeneratively, right? So we brought the soil to health, we put it in, and then a very, very strange thing happened in Costa Rica. There was a drought. It didn't rain for six weeks. Not that long of a drought, but if you're in the rainforest, that's a long drop. This is what happened to the industrial planting. It didn't germinate. Nothing happened. We had to go back in and we had to spend the money. And we had to get rid of this and, and, and we had to replant it. But imagine you're standing there and behind me is where we did things in a regenerative way. Same seed, same soil, same climate. All we did is make that soil healthy before we planted it. So imagine turning around and seeing that. Which of those looks renewable? We talk a lot about how we graze cattle. Three and a half billion hectares are used for grazing cattle on earth and we're, we're grazing them in a way that is not renewable, that does not take care of the soil. What you're looking at on the right is where uh, cows are grazed in a way that replicates nature and on the left they're done in an industrial way. And I won't go into it other than to say, nobody cut the grass on the left and nobody planted the grass on the right. This is what happens after a couple of years. And, and the beauty of this is, if you have that kind of grass on your land, you're not bringing food in to feed your cattle anymore. And so your costs are going down and you're raising grass-fed cattle so it's healthier and ranchers get a premium for it. Scientists are now telling us that we can restore the soil really fast, that within a year we can, we can start turning around the productivity of that soil. And that, that's astonishing. Uh, you know, we took a long time to destroy it, but we can start, start regenerating it very quickly. We know if we do this, when we're talking about drawing carbon down to give us the time to get to a carbon neutral society without the natural systems break, we know that we can do this. Depending on the studies that you look at, we can be drawing down, in some cases, as many 40 tons of carbon per hectare per year. You know, we always use three tons, just because it's about as conservative a number as you'll find anywhere. But in all of our projections, we use three tons, and we still get there. Another thing, we talk about the water crisis. For every 1% of organic matter that we restore in the soil, the... the, the uh, ability of that soil to retain water goes up so much that we, rest we store about 25,000 gallons per hectare for each 1% of organic matter restoration. So if you are in a world that is absolutely running out of fresh water and it's a huge water crisis, imagine 25,000 acres, or 25,000 gallons less per water you have to use every time you water each acre. It also cleanses that water. So we can increase food security, we can feed more people, and we can explain it. And this is really important as you're trying to get a world to change. We can explain it really easily. I mean, imagine going out and telling the world that we can reverse climate change. And to say that we can do that simply by creating renewable food the same way we created renewable energy. Everybody understands renewable energy. They get it. It worked. So imagine going out and saying that. Imagine saying we can do it simply by growing food in a way that works with nature instead of against nature. There's nothing complicated about what I'm saying here. These are very simple premises. Imagine being, out, being able to go out and say to people that we can reverse climate change simply by using the same solar-powered energy that powers renewable food, to, uh, renewable energy to power renewable food. And we can do that. How do we plan 
to pull 250 billion tons down from the atmosphere. 280 billion tons. Boy, that sounds like an obscene amount of carbon. And it is. It's a lot. How do we do it before the natural systems snap? First thing we want to do is stop people like me from saying we have to draw down 250 billion tons. 250 gigatons. 250 sounds much more doable, doesn't it? You know, we, we may know it's the same thing, but it's how it gets processed by the world. Right now there are companies out there, Walmart, Disney, I think Unilever just did it, that are making gigaton commitments on reducing emissions. They're taking the responsibility to reduce their gigaton, uh, their emissions by, by a gigaton over the next 10 or in one case 20 years. What if we got them to commit to drawing down a gigaton? Every one of those companies could do that very, very easily. If we just changed the way we grazed cattle, just that, around the world, we could draw down 200 gigatons in the next 25 years. So we're almost there just by doing one thing in one industry. Project Drawdown shows us, with the data and the cost, of how we can draw 500 to 800 gigatons down. So now, all of a sudden, the world's going, you know what? We can do this, but we need a plan. So we are working on something called Soil 2050. And when I say working, it's very early stage. I don't want to overpromise where we are. Uh, but it's a plan to rebuild our soil health. And by doing that, rebuild, uh, uh, reverse climate change, rebuild human health, rebuild our food system, and this will be a big, very comprehensive plan. We've started it. Uh, we're getting partners in right now. We've gotten some grant money in to do this. Uh, as somebody said the other day, what do you think it's going to cost to really do that? And I said, I don't know, a billion dollars? And they said, well, that's a lot of money. And I said, you know, it is. But you know how much money we spent in 2009 globally bailing out the banks? Anybody have an idea? $13 trillion. Is it worth a billion to bail out the planet? Puts it in perspective pretty quickly. So to conclude, I, I want to say that to be successful, we need to communicate better than we've done in the past. And the things that we need to do desperately and extremely well, number one, we have got to convince the world that reducing emissions is not going to solve climate change. We have to draw carbon down, or, or it's never going to work, and those 15 minutes are going to be up in a euphemistic 15 minutes. We have to tell the world that soil can do this for us, and the other benefits of restoring the soil are almost as good as, as uh, reversing climate change. We have to communicate to the world that we can't feed you anymore. We can't feed ourselves anymore without any more topsoil. And we're almost done with it at the rate we're growing. We want to eat healthier food. The whole world saying they want to eat healthier food. The food movement is growing. But you know what? It's impossible to feed the world healthy food without healthy soil. It's impossible to solve our freshwater issues without restoring the health of our soil. Impossible. And we need to get them to think and understand that if we move from industrial agriculture to regenerative agriculture, we grow things in partnership with nature, who's worked this thing out, we'll have healthy soil again. And if we have healthy soil again, our food becomes renewable, like our energy is renewable. And if we take that renewable food and we combine it with that renewable energy, you know what we get? We get that promise back for our future. Renewable food needs to make the industrial food model obsolete. Thank you.